Hey everyone! I am Mega Shiny Object. Welcome back to Let's Play Mass Effect. We just became a Spectre. Woohoo! And now we're going to go talk to uh, good old Ambassador Udina, who is going to give himself an ulcer. Okay. Who's this guy? I'm on a break. Okay. Talk to someone else if you need anything. I've got a lot on my mind. What's wrong? Maybe I can help. Hmm. Well, maybe you can. You're a soldier, right? You ever head out to the Traverse? Huh, <laughs> more than I like. The Traverse is a rough place. We're out there quite a bit. My brother's the captain of a ship called the Majesty. It was crossing the Traverse a few days ago when it disappeared. Just dropped right off the grid. And that usually means one of two things. They had massive mechanical failure, or they were attacked. Huh, those are both bad. Neither one of those options leaves a lot of hope. <laughs> I won't give up on my brother. Not yet. I've got the coordinates for the last transmission from his vessel. Okay. What kind of ship was it? Don't let the name fool you. The Majesty's just a small trading vessel, only a handful of crew. But he kept it in good condition. I don't think mechanical failure is too likely. But they don't have any real weapons or shields. If anyone did come after them... The Majesty'd be a sitting duck. Uh, reward? What's in this for me? Aw. I can't afford to pay you anything. If I had that kind of cash, I'd have hired a recovery team to track him down already. Didn't need to Maybe you that. could look into this as a personal favor, you know? We humans have to stick together. Isn't anyone else looking into this? My brother's just a small independent trader. Ships like his disappear in the Traverse all the time. Okay, I'll do it. If your brother's still alive, I'll find him. Give me the coordinates. <laughs> I'll forward them to your ship right away. Please let me know as soon as you find him. I don't think I found him the last time I played this. I don't remember where the guy is, and I don't know how to find him. <coughs> Excuse me. So I just never wound up doing that mission, and I felt bad for it. Because it just sat there in my journal from, from the beginning of the game, and I couldn't find the guy. And I kept walking past him. It made me feel bad. We'll see if I can find it this time. Oh, that's not what I wanted. No talking? Oh, here we go. So tell me. Who'd win in a fight between you and Shepard? <laughs> that question smacks of impertinence. Commander Shepard is a Spectre with a distinguished service record. Oh, thanks. So was Saren. Think about it. I think I beat him. <laughs> Although, I don't know. He's a pretty badass sniper, so... I don't know. Rex that asks that for everybody, by the way. Anyone you bring with him, he'll at one point ask... Uh... Who would win a fight... Between... Uh, them and Shepard. Garrus, babe, you come around the railing. There you go. Good boy. You can't walk through walls, sweetie. I was never a fan of this statue. The Krogan Monument just seems more impressive to me. Of course it does. The Keepers never paid much attention to that relay monument. I always found that a little strange. That is kind of strange. Um, where am I going? The wrong way. That's where I'm going. <laughs> this is going to be 30 minutes of Shiny Gets Lost. Woohoo! Oh, is the Hanar back? Oh, good! I was worried I'd run him off. Now who's lost? Rexy! Come on, boy! Come on! Go, Rexy! Good boy! Oh, good, he's back! He's not hurting anybody by preaching. Good, I'm glad he's back. Where there was only darkness, the Enkindlers gave light. 
I was worried I'd effed that one up really somehow. I'm going to go just to CSEC from here. No need to go through all those elevators again. Aha! Here we go. CSEC Academy. To docking bay. Alright. No music. Sad face. In other news, Exogenicorp is still denying reports that one of their survey teams has gone missing in the Hades Gamma Cluster. When asked why communication with the survey team was suddenly cut off last week, company officials refused to comment. Oh, you know, I meant to go see the requisitions officer. I'm a moron. <laughs> I'll have to go see him later, I guess. Whoops. I wanted to go see him. But I'm not riding this elevator all the way back down. Screw that. <laughs> Pop up to the top. Udina and Anderson are waiting. I go, hold on one minute, and go back down. They're like, what the fuck, man? Ambassador Udina. Hello, dude. I've got big news for you, Shepard. Captain Anderson is stepping down as commanding officer of the Normandy. The ship is yours now. Really? She's quick and quiet, and you know the crew. Perfect ship for a Spectre. Treat her well, Commander. I will. I'll take good care of her, sir. <coughs> I know you will, Commander. Now, why are you doing this? I want the truth. Why are you stepping down, sir? You needed your own ship. A Spectre can't answer to anyone but the Council. And it's time for me to step down. There is more to this. Come clean with me, Captain. You owe me that much. I was in your shoes 20 years ago, Shepard. They were considering me for the Spectres. You should have told me. You can trust me with things like this. Why didn't you ever mention this? What was I supposed to say? I could have been a Spectre, but I blew it? Yeah. I failed, Commander. It's not something I'm proud of. Ask me later and I'll tell you the whole story. For now, all you need to know is, I was sent on a mission with Saren, and he made sure the Council rejected me. I had my shot. It came and went. Now you have a chance to make up for my mistakes. You can count on me, sir. I won't let you down, sir. Saren's gone. Don't even try to find him. But we know what he's after. The conduit. He's got his Geth scouring the Traverse looking for clues. We had reports of Geth in the Pharaoh system shortly before our colony there dropped out of contact, and there have been sightings around Noveria. Find out what Saren was after on Pharaohs in Noveria. Maybe you can figure out where the conduit is before he does. What about the Reapers? The Reapers are the real threat. I'm with the Council on this one, Shepard. I'm not sure are. they even exist. But if they do exist, the conduit's the key to bringing them back. Stop Saren from getting the conduit, and we stop the Reapers from returning. All right, count on me. I'll stop him. What is that noise? We have one more lead. Matriarch Benezia, the other voice in that recording. She has a daughter, a scientist, who specializes in the Protheans. We don't know if she's involved, but it might be a good idea to try and find her. See what she knows. Her name's Liara, Dr. Liara Tassoni. We have reports she was exploring an archaeological dig on one of the uncharted worlds in the Artemis Tau Cluster. I think I'm gonna start there, then. Sounds like we should head for the Artemis Tau Cluster. It's your decision, Commander. You're a Spectre now. You don't answer to us. But your actions still reflect on humanity as a whole. You make a mess and I get stuck cleaning it up. It might be necessary. I'll do whatever it takes to stop Saren. Not exactly the answer I was looking for, Shepard. Remember, you were a human long before you were a Spectre. <coughs> I have a meeting to get to. Captain Anderson can answer any questions you might have. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, now here's where we talk about, um... Saren. Yes, Commander? Now, Sabrina Shepard has a very deep respect for Captain Anderson. She likes the man. She respects the man. And she, so she, like I said earlier, she wanted to know about his history with Saren from him. 
not from that jackass Harkin. Because she figures that if there was something that, you know, he wanted to tell her, then he needs to tell her, him, her himself. Are you okay? How are you holding up? Honestly, this isn't how I pictured my career coming to an end. Pushing papers really isn't my thing. Huh. But you're the one who can stop, Saren. I believe in you, Shepard. If that means I have to step aside, so be it. You and Saren have a past you never told me about. Tell me what happened with you and Saren 20 years ago. It's close to 20 years ago now. <laughs> That's what I Ambassador said. Ambassador Goyle was our representative here on the Citadel. Like Udina, she wanted to get a human into the Spectres. She chose me. The Council sent Saren to keep an eye on me and evaluate my performance, just like they sent Nihilus to keep tabs on you. Okay, so why hide this from me? You can trust me with this information, dude. Why weren't you honest <clears throat> with me? It's not something I'm proud of. I had a chance to become the first human Spectre, and I failed. Saren made sure of that. What happened? I think I deserve the whole story. We had intel on a rogue scientist being funded by Batarian interests. He was trying to set up a facility to develop illegal AI technology out in the Verge. Alliance Intel had done all the work, but the Council wanted a Spectre involved. We compromised. I was assigned to help Saren in his investigation. We tracked the scientist to a refining facility on Kamala. He was hidden away somewhere inside, protected by an army of Batarian mercenaries. The plan was simple. Sneak into the plant, capture the scientist, sneak back out. Ooh, excuse Quick, me. quiet, and a minimum of bloodshed. And something went wrong? I'm guessing things didn't go as planned. Saren and I split up to cover more ground. Then about halfway through the mission, there was a massive explosion in the refinery core. Officially, it was ruled an accident, but I think Saren detonated it on purpose to draw off the enemy guards. Was anyone hurt? How many casualties? The explosion tore the refinery to shreds. The whole place was on fire. Black chemical clouds poured out into the atmosphere. Nobody inside survived. There was a camp for the workers and their families nearby. Between the fires and the toxic fumes, the final death count was over 500. Wow. Mostly civilians. Saren didn't care. The target was eliminated. Mission accomplished. And I ended up taking the blame. That ended all talk of me joining the Spectres. You got blamed? Saren caused the explosion. How'd he pin it on you? In his report, Saren accused me of blowing his cover. He said it was my fault the guards were ready for us. He claimed that's why it turned into a massacre. Saren's report was all the proof the Council needed to kill my chances of becoming a Spectre. Uh, that wasn't your fault. Why'd I you mean, let him get away fair, with I it? Mean. Who do you think the Council was going to lead <coughs> to? Me? Or their best agent? I can read, I swear. I had a bad feeling about him right from the start. I should have been more careful. Maybe I could have stopped things before they got out of hand. Dude, it wasn't your fault. Now I read the right one. Don't blame yourself, Captain. I don't. I blame Saren. I think he wanted things to go bad. He was looking for an excuse to blow that refinery. Maybe he just likes the violence. Maybe he was just trying to make me look bad to keep humans out of the Spectres. If so, he pulled it off. Alrighty. The only thing I care about is stopping Saren. You're right, Commander. It's no good living in the past. Okay, so tell me about Pharos. Any extra intel you can give me on our colony at Pharos? The entire planet used to be one giant Prothean city. Mostly ruins now. But some of the infrastructure is still intact. The colony tried to build on what the Protheans left behind. We lost all contact with them when the Geth attacked. And uh, Novaria? What can you tell Sorry, me about Novaria? Novaria's trouble. Always has been. The whole planet's basically a center for corporations to conduct illegal research. Nice, Watch goody. your back there, Shepard. Spectres are about the only form of Citadel authority Novaria respects. But they aren't popular. Okay. And the Artemis Tau Cluster. What do you know about the Artemis Tau Cluster? Not much. I've never been there myself. A handful of systems with a few small, uncharted worlds, but no real colonies. Might not be easy finding Dr. Tassoni out there. My advice is to look for the world with the Prothean ruins. All right, well, I better get going, then. I should go. I'll be here if you need anything. All right. I'm tangled. There we go. I got tangled in my headphone wire. Whoa, what? Something appeared over here. Ah. There we go. It's weird. 
Shepard kind of feels like she's stealing the ship from Stand Anderson. by shore party. Decontamination in progress. It's not her ship, it's Anderson's ship. I heard what happened to Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Yeah, it sucks. Just watch your back, Commander. If things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. This feels wrong. Captain Anderson should be the one in charge. It's like I'm stealing the ship from him. Yeah, the captain got screwed. But it's not like you could have stopped it. Nobody's blaming you. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Oh, thank you. Intercom's open. If you got anything you want to say to the crew, now's the time. Alright, I need to be honest with them. This is Commander Shepard speaking. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. I won't lie to you, crew. This mission isn't going to be easy. This began with an attack on a human settlement in the Traverse. But we know Saren won't stop there. His Geth armies aren't going to stay on the far fringes of Citadel space. Our enemy knows we're coming. Wherever he searches for the conduit, we'll be there. We will hunt him to the very ends of the galaxy and bring him down. Humanity needs to do this. Not just for our own sake, but for the sake of every other species in Citadel space. Saren must be stopped, and I promise you all, we will stop him. Well said, Commander. Captain will be proud. I won't let him down. The Captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Yes, ma'am. I didn't talk through that cutscene because I kind of wanted Shepard's voice to be the only one you hear during the speech. So, what's up, Joker? Commander! Something you need? Ship status report. How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet. If you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her, <coughs> balance me. isn't what you'd expect. Takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. Okay, so I want to talk to you. I like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I am the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. I didn't mean to insult you. Jeez. I'm sorry, Joker. I didn't even know you were sick. You mean... You mean you didn't know? Yeah. Oh, crap. That's what I just said. Okay, I've got Vrolix Syndrome. Brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. It sucks. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! It's very dramatic. <laughs> but I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. That sucks. Okay, personal history? How'd you end up joining the Alliance? Look, if you're looking for an inspirational tale of the crippled kid overcoming impossible odds, you're gonna be disappointed. My mother was a civilian contractor working for the Alliance. I basically grew up on the Arcturus station back when they were building up the fleets. Spend all that time around Alliance ships, there's a good chance you'll end up going to the Academy. Okay, so tell me about your disease. I need to know more about this Rolex Syndrome if I'm putting my ship in your hands. Yeah, of course you do. It's an extremely rare condition. Nobody knows exactly what causes it. Genetic, maybe. It's treatable, but there's no cure. They classify my case as moderate to severe. I was born with over a dozen fractures. Hip, thighs, ankles, my Ow. bones were already breaking in the womb. A hundred years ago, I wouldn't have survived past my first year. Lucky for me, modern medical science has turned me into a productive member of society. So how do you do your job? You're not gonna break a bone trying to fly the ship, are you? Uh, I don't fly with my feet, Commander. I didn't so know I'm that. So fine as long as I'm in this <laughs> chair. I gotta be real careful when I get up to take a piss, though. I can do my job as well as anyone on the ship. Better, actually. Okay. So don't worry about it. I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. Let's talk about something else. Whatever you want, Commander. How'd you get your nickname? Why does everyone call you Joker? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff Moreau. Plus, I love to make little children laugh. Oh, come on, that's no answer. You're dodging the question. Look, I didn't pick the name. One of the instructors in flight school used to bug me about never smiling. She started calling me Joker, mm -hmm. and it stuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Were you unhappy? 
Why didn't you ever smile? Hey, I worked my ass off in flight school, Commander. The world's not gonna hand you anything if you go around grinning like an idiot. By the end of the year, I was the best pilot in the academy. Even better than the instructors, and everybody knew it. They'd all got their asses kicked by the sickly kid with the creaky little legs. <laughs> One guess who was smiling at graduation. Alright, I'll talk to you later. I have to go. Alright, see ya. I actually went to school with somebody who had a um, brittle bone disease. About fourth grade. We were all doing a... Uh, she uh, got around in a wheelchair. Um, one of those uh, mechanic wheelchairs that had little joysticks you could use to uh, to move around. And uh, we all did this paper mache project. So, after the project was over, the teacher told us to all, by table, to go get up and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, go get up and uh, wash our hands. Caden doesn't have anything to say, so we're not going to talk to him. And he gets to my table, and this girl sat at, at uh, at the table with me, the girl with this brittle bone disease. <laughs> and we all get up to, to leave. And she looks around and starts laughing and goes, I can't move! Because she couldn't use her, her wheelchair. It was really funny. I felt bad for laughing, but it was pretty funny. Poor thing couldn't move. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? <laughs> Personal questions. How did you end up serving on an Alliance ship? I enlisted right out of med school. Earth always seemed boring to me, too safe, too secure. I figured the colonies were teeming with exotic adventure. I wanted to travel the stars, tending the wounds of tough soldiers with piercing eyes and sensitive souls. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out military life isn't quite as romantic as I'd imagined. Jenkins is the romantic humanity one, huh? humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse. And the Alliance always needs good doctors. So I stayed on to do my part. Any regrets? Ever think you made the wrong choice? Sometimes I think about opening a private practice back on Earth. Or maybe taking a position at one of the new med centers out in the colonies. But there's something special about working on soldiers. If I left the Alliance now, I'd feel like I was abandoning them. Caden Alenko. How well do you know the Lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before this mission. But he has an impressive service record. Over a dozen special commendations. He tends to keep to himself, though. Maybe because of the headaches. It's not easy being an L2. L2? What does that have to do with it? Well, most biotics now use the L3 implants. Lieutenant Alenko was wired with the old L2 configuration. Sometimes there are complications. Shouldn't Shepard know this? She's a biotic, isn't she? Complications? What kind of complications? Severe mental disabilities, insanity, crippling physical pain. Yeah, I'd say those There's are complications. There's a long list of horrific side effects. Caden's lucky. He just gets migraines. Oh, lucky indeed. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Don't know how many of you have actually ever had a migraine out there, but it, they are a pain in the ass. <coughs> Excuse me. I used to get them all the time. Don't get them anymore, thank God. But I used to get them all the time, and they suck. Light, sound, everything makes your head hurt. I has my own room. Personnel manual. This is a rather shitty room, actually. It's not real nice and pretty, is it? You know what I need? Like a fish tank or something right here. <laughs> Anyways, I think I'm gonna cut this episode a little bit short. Maybe not too short, I guess, but... Uh, thanks for watching, everybody! I will see you all in the next episode! Ciao.